Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our single beams um, into our Sterling Cooper project. And the single beams that we're going to add in, we're going to add in one here between column grids 1 and 2 along column grid B. All right, so if we go to our instructions, this is in part 2. And let's go to page 1. So this is on page 10. All right, so it says adding steel girders. What we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, this W12 by 35. So that's this wide flange. So that's a steel member that we're going to add in. And uh, the top of this girder should be located at 13 foot 5 and a half inches. Um, and then these are the two locations for those two beams. All right, so 13 foot 5 is the top. And we're looking for a W12 by 35. All right, so when I go back to my project here, so our first step is, uh, is on the structural tab, we're going to go to the beam column. Uh, or the beam command, sorry. So I'm going to go to the structural tab. All right, and I'm looking for the beam command. So this is it here. All right, so that basically starts us off. And so what we're looking for is a W12 by 35. Now here I have it here. So what you'll do is step, step two is on your type selector, go to the uh, size of beam that you that's required for the project. So this is a W12 by 35. Now for most of you, you probably don't are, you don't have this loaded into your project already. So let me show you how to load in uh, a W12 by 35. So the first thing you're going to do is just like when you're adding a door or a window, just going to go to load family. So I'm going to say load family while still in the beam command. All right, and it, what it does is it takes you to your Imperial Library. And so what we're going to do is scroll down to the structural stuff here. So it's structural, let's see, structural framing. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to double click and open that up. All right, we're working with steel here. All right, and then it's going to scroll down to the bottom. So this is the family for our W wide flange um, uh, beams. All right, so click on that, and then I'm going to hit open. And what you're going to see next is this is what's called a type selector. What it is is basically um, a single family, and it, these are basically a list of uh, types, and there's probably a couple hundred types um, in this family. So when you have like a family that has multiple types, a lot of types, a lot of different types, what you'll have is a type selector. I'm sorry, a, a type catalog, which is what this is. So I'm looking for a W12 by 35. So I'm going to scroll down here, W12 by 35. All right, and I'm going to select that, so I'm going to say OK. All right, and then um, since I already have this loaded in, I'm going to tell it to overwrite my version of it. Uh, you probably won't get that. Uh, actually, you probably will get that because you already have a you you have one in there. All right, so here's our W12 by 35. All right, and then um, our third step is on the options bar. We're going to select the placement plane, which is uh, uh, the base level that we're going to uh, base these beams off. So we're going to base it at 13 foot five and a half inches off our. O1 ground floor level. So our placement plane is the O1 ground floor level. All right, so that's basically going to be our base, the bottom of it. And then our structural usage, uh, we're going to put, uh, we're going to select girder. All right, so O1 ground floor plane and structural uh, usage is girder. So then step four, we're going to the properties dialog box, which is this guy here. All right, so when we go to the properties dialog box, what we're looking for is a Z direction offset value. And uh, in that, that's where we're going to put in our uh, the height of our beam. So let's see here. There it is. All right, so Z direction offset value is down here at the bottom. All right, so that, our beam, the top of our beam is basically going to be uh, 13 foot 5 and a half. So I'm just going to type in 13 foot 5 and a half inches in there. So that's going to be a height. And then your, your Z justification, you have the option of top, center, bottom, origin. We want the top. All right, so I'm going to say top, OK. And then uh, make sure that you're in your type selector one last time that you have that W12 by 35. All right, then you're ready for the fifth step, which is basically just drawing your uh, beam in there from center to center. So um, this beam here is going along column grid B and between column grids 1 and 2. So what you want to do is you're going to select that center of that column. All right, so it's spanning from the center of this column. And it's going across, and it's going to the center of that column. So I click there. And once you get it done, you're not going to see anything. You're going to get this little note down here that says, none of the created elements are visible in the O1 ground floor view. Uh, you may want to check this. The reason why is because it's 13 feet 5 and a half inches, so it's up, up above your head. So it's above our cut plane, and it's above our, um, our top uh, elevation. So the only way you're going to see that thing is if you go to a section cut. And I just happen to have this section cut conveniently placed right here. So if I double click on that section cut, you'll see it right there. So that's the beam we just drew in. So if I select it, 
and we just kind of check things out here. All right, uh, what it says is uh, it's a W12 by 35, and I'm actually just going to measure it real quick. All right, W yeah, 13 foot five and a half, and then here's the steel joist. So it's supporting uh, the this beam here is supporting the steel joist. Now there's a little bit of a gap there, so <laughs> 13 foot five and a half inches is a little short, but um, for the sake of this assignment, let's just leave it at 13 foot five and a half. Looks like it probably could go to yeah, 13 seven and a quarter. Um, oh no, wait, sorry, go down a little bit. 13 foot seven. So let me select it. See if I can edit that real quick. Yeah, oops. So I can go that 13 seven. All right, so it's up to you. You can either leave it at 13 foot five and a half. Or you can bump it up to hit that uh, to hit the bottom of that joist. Uh, when I'm grading this, all I'm looking for is just so long as um, is it's either at 13 foot five and a half or it's at the underside of that joist. If it's up through the floor, then I'll you know I'll take points off for it. But uh, but if it's something like 13 seven and it's at the underside of that uh, joist, then you're fine. Uh, another thing too, I want to point out too. Right now, I have my detail level set to fine. And just watch what happens when I change my detail level uh, back down to coarse, and it just goes to single lines. So if you if you draw it in there and you see a single line, and you don't see the joist seat or anything like that, just switch it to um, uh, to fine your detail level to fine, and you'll see a lot more detail on these things. So any questions on that one or? Yeah, the only way to look, to look at it after you've drawn it is either through a section view or you can go to your 3D view and just hide that wall and then kind of rotate around underneath it. Then you can see it that way too. But because it's above your head, um, and actually for most of you, you don't have ceilings in your projects yet. So if I go to the O1 ground floor ceiling, the reflected ceiling plan view, and I just hide my ceiling. Let's see the, there. You should be able to see it here. Ah, uh, you don't. Maybe visibility graphics. You need to turn it on. Oh, structural framing was turned off. And then yeah, change your detail back to fine, and you should be able to see it from your reflected ceiling plan view. I'm sorry. Say that again. Oh, I, I, on, on mine, I drew in a ceiling uh, in there instead of. Um, uh, I'm a, I'm a, on this one, I'm a, fr a few steps further along than you guys are. You're going to eventually add a ceiling in, but at this point, you shouldn't have a ceiling in. So you won't have to hide that or anything. Oh, up here? Yeah, yeah. So probably on yours, you haven't edited your floor yet. No. Okay. All right. And then let me hit stop on this.